Hi and welcome to my channel. My name is Laura Zorza and I'm a retired Navy veteran. I created this channel to help anyone that is currently serving in the Navy, along with anyone that wishes to enlist in the Navy, regardless if it's active duty or in the reserves. My little fuzzy ball just fell off my microphone. All right, so if you're looking for information, education, or motivation, then you've come to the right place. Today, I'm gonna to do some Q&A. And the first question I have is from Skittles45. Skittles45 asked me, and I hear this a lot, why did I join the Navy? Okay. We all have our own reasons, our own why. And my why was, for one, to get out of my smaller hometown of 20 some thousand people. It was an Air Force town at the time. It, the base no longer exists, but it was K.I. Sawyer Air Force Base up in Marquette, Michigan, Upper Peninsula. And the way I viewed it was, after I graduated high school, you either worked retail, construction, um, some type of other labor or job like electrician, you know, um, carpenter, unless you went to school. And I honestly, I did go to college for, for a bit, but I had no idea what I wanted to do with my life. I did not foresee me doing any of the jobs that I previously mentioned. And I actually didn't even know who I was. So I left to leave a small town to basically find out who I was and grow as an individual to get away from my parents, um, and I say that in a lovingly way, but I wanted to uh, be my own person. And then travel. Travel really appealed to me. Um, the Navy was actually not the first recruiter I went to. I actually went to the Marines, but the Marines were out to lunch twice. And then I went over to the Army. I took the ASVAB actually with them, but they were a little too persistent for me. Um, really wanting me to enlist, and something with my gut just said no. So when I went over and talked to the recruiter, which I did not know at the time, uh, one of the two recruiters for the Navy was a SEAL. And you know, so they had all these awesome photos and, and sea stories to tell me. So I enlisted. Um, yeah, so that was it. I don't have any regrets other than the fact I wish I would have enlisted earlier. I waited till I was 21, but so yeah. That's why I joined the Navy, the main reasons there. So, um, Ghost00057. Ghost asked me, what time of year did you go to boot camp and was it cold because I hate the cold? All right, Ghost00057. Um, it was actually extremely hot. And I say that because I did not go to Great Lakes. Great Lakes uh, was not available for females back when I joined, went to boot camp in 1989. Yes, you heard that right, 1989. Um, Orlando. Orlando, Florida was the only place we could go. And it was actually the opposite. When I left my hometown of Marquette, Michigan, it was, it was like 20 below with the wind chill. And when I got to Orlando, it was in the like mid to high 80s. I actually got really sick. Um, I caught a cold because I had never been in that, that type of weather before. So, but um, you know, even going to Great Lakes, yeah, you'll be outside and all, but it's uh, things have changed. So you do a lot inside your what they call now your ships in your building. So, and honestly, if you don't like the cold, you might want to reconsider the military because there's going to be a lot of times, regardless of the branch you're in, where you're going to be cold, wet, and miserable. Next question, Vanessa C. asked me, "Is boot camp hard?" First off, what do you mean by hard? I'll start it off that way. What is hard to you? Because if you're viewing, you know, physically hard, um, mentally hard, you know, being away from your family hard, I mean, what is hard? It's a very subjective question. So, you know, what to you is, is hard? Because for me personally, I mean, I was, I wouldn't even say I was scared. I was a little nervous of leaving home because I had never been away from home, even at 21, but I was really excited to go. And when I got there, I mean, I was clueless. I, um, I mean, I was totally clueless. But it's like anything in life. You know, it's how you view things. If you think life is hard, it's going to be difficult. I, uh, I honestly thought it was easy. You know, granted, I went back at a different um, time period. But I do know from people that are RDCs, that have been an RDC, um, throughout the last 10 years that are even currently up there as, you know, working on the base as instructors and, and whatnot, along with, 
individual sailors over the last 10, 15 years that I know have gone through boot camp, along with personal friends that have gone to boot camp, both on active and reserve side. I mean, it's the same boot camp, but that have come out, they've all told me it wasn't what they thought. It was, for the most part, it was much easier than they thought. It, there was not enough PT. And that's, that's honestly something I was disappointed in because there was not enough PT. I thought, you know, I had in my head, yeah, I'm going to go to this, do this obstacle course because, I mean, that's what the Navy recruiter showed me. I didn't know at the time that trident he was wearing was a SEAL. But, you know, he's showing me all this stuff. I, yeah, I'm going to go do these obstacle courses. We're going to, you know, be rolling in the mud and, you know, shooting guns and doing all this. And that's not boot camp. It's not boot camp. Now, if you go to the Marines, yes. If you go to the Army, m much more physical. But, you know, you don't do repelling and all that stuff. It just does not happen, okay? So biggest thing I would say with boot camp, most individuals have a difficult time with other than being away from home, um, especially if they happen to have, like, a child at home. That separation, maybe a little bit of separation anxiety, uh, is actually just getting yelled at because you will get yelled at, okay? So if you're, not, um, if you're not accustomed to that, if you don't have thick skin, and it will develop over time if you decide to stay in. Uh, that's probably the most difficult thing, mm -hmm. at least that I can think off the top of my head. But, you know, like I said, whatever you make of life, if it's difficult to you, it's going to be difficult in boot camp. So let's see. Georgina S. Georgina says, what was my job and did I like it? My answer to you is which one? <laughs> okay. I had three different rates when I was in the Navy. Uh, I joined as a TM, a torpedo man's mate, and I actually, well, when I was came out of boot camp in, in Orlando, I went to A school in Orlando, and I also went to C school there. That's where the, uh, the schooling was for, for the TMs. I was actually became an ASROC tech, anti-submarine rocket. And back then, TMs and even GMs, they, had, uh, they, were, they were subdivided, meaning TMs, there was a TMO, an operator, and then there was a TMT, a tech, and I was a TMT. And I had no idea about the difference, and I didn't even know I was going to be a TMT or a TMO until I got to A school, and then they, they split us up. So I became a tech, which basically you were the one, I was the one that was actually um, assembling like the Mark 48, 46, and such. Um, same thing, if you were a tech, you were actually assembling those torpedoes. But um, when I left active duty and decided to come back in like four months later, because I did miss it, so I always, I always say now, really think about getting out because there will, be, um, there will be a lot of times where you really think about like, hey, I really miss the military. And it's more of the people that you miss. That's what I found. Um, so yeah, I, uh, when I came back in, they made me become an AO, aviation ordinance, which I hated. Okay, um, did not, they did not send me to A school or anything. It was all on the job training. I did that for a couple of years. I was with the helicopter squadron, HCS-4, which is no longer around, at least not as that name. Uh, most of the commands I was attached to, they've either decommissioned, they've gone away, or they have been renamed and evolved into something else. When I was with HCS-4, we, uh, how they sold it to me was, you're gonna be working with the SEALs. So yeah, we were like the transport for a lot of the spec war, but um, I didn't like it. Being on a ship, I really loved. I loved being underway. Uh, then when I left the reserves in like December 95, January 96, I actually moved from Norfolk, Virginia, where I was currently living, down to South Florida, where I am at now. And I waited three years because I, I had a bad taste in my mouth about the military. And I'll be discussing all that in in later videos, but I ended up uh, coming back after three years to the reserves and they made me a torpedo man again. That was needs of the Navy. It's, it's whatever they have available. So they were like, hey, we're going to put you back as a TM. So I became a TM again. But I, but I actually joined, um, since they saw that I was with HCS-4, they actually put me with a spec war unit. I was with um, Naval Special Warfare Unit 8 out of Panama even though my reserve unit, I drilled in Miami. We went to Panama. We did a lot of time actually in Panama until that closed down. And then I went to another SEAL unit. But I was a torpedo man all the way up until uh, they merged many, many years later. And I became a gunner's mate. So 
myself a TM though at heart. So Cat, Cat002, Cat asked me, what was your favorite place to visit and the worst? I would have to say my favorite, even so much, not so much even to visit, but my favorite place I would say I was stationed was Abot. Abot is the El Basra oil terminal off the coast of Iraq. So it's considered Iraqi waters. Uh, I was not there long enough as far as I was concerned. I loved it. I loved the atmosphere. I loved how small it was. It was less than a mile long. And uh, I'll put a picture up here so you can see. But um, a lot of people, it drove them crazy because you were very confined to the, to the platform. It was a 24 hour nonstop job because there was only myself and one other gunners made out there at a time. And if, uh, for instance, if the Iranians came in, if they wanted to attack the platform, which, you know, they would come out and they'd tease us periodically. We'd go to general quarters. Um, we actually called it something different. We called it Wolverine when I was out there. But you go to general quarters, you know, everyone would man their gun posts, and myself and the other gunner's mate was responsible for getting to the armory and, you know, dispersing the weapons and ammo, and if anything needed to be done, you know, if a weapon's down or something, we would take care of it. But it was very peaceful. I loved it. I really loved being out there, and um, that's the first one that comes to mind. The, uh, when you say the worst, I would think... It's not even so much places, because to me, just traveling was amazing. I don't care where in the world I went, it was, it was great. It was more the commands. To me, commands can make or break your deployment, your enlistment. Um, I've seen too many people, myself being one of them, that after four years of active duty left, and it was because of my command. So, you know, if I think of something else later down the, down the line, I'll, uh, I'll make another video. That's the first thing I think about when you ask me that question. So, Mari G. Mari G asked, where did you serve majority of my time? I'd say the Middle East. You know, believe it or not, I've, uh, you know, I'd, I'd be talking about a deployment or something and people would be like, but you were in the Navy. There, there's no water, you know. They would say, there's no water in Iraq. I'm like, well, there is water surrounding it. Navy's not all the water. And actually, since 9-11, all the branches, even the Coast Guard, um, we serve over there in CENTCOM, in the CENTCOM area, Central Command area, which is Iraq, Kuwait, Qatar, um, you know, Syria, uh, Bahrain, just, you know, that whole region. And, um, and then eventually became also over in Afghanistan, which we, we, we all refer to as the sandbox. So I spent most of my career, more than half of it, over in the Middle East slash sandbox area. Um, so yeah, one thing I do wanna, I'll, I'll make a video on this one too, but um, for those that serve, we developed respiratory issues from the dust, fine dust in the sand. So definitely, um, definitely have everything documented. All right, Abbott K, Abbott K asks, how much do you make from retirement? Nothing. Right, nothing. Not yet anyways. Um, and I'll make a video about this. Active duty and reserves, night and day when it comes to retirement. A lot of people don't understand and they don't tell you. Active duty, you retire 20 plus years, boom, you get your check right away. Reserves, you gotta wait till you're 60. Now there are a couple stipulations. Um, for instance, I'll be getting mine when I'm 58. Uh, and I'll, I'll discuss all that in another video. But uh, yeah, you don't get it right away, so you better get a job. You do 20 plus years, whatever it is in the reserves, you better get a job. Um, and it's not the same paycheck either. So I'll be making videos about all that, okay? So if you're considering reserves, uh, let me know down below whatever questions you have in general, but especially about active duty to reserves, you know, if you're considering which one should I go into, I would like to know and what questions you have. I'm definitely going to make a lot of videos about that because if somebody would have told me, um, the difference would have laid it out, would not have stayed in the reserves. Um, yeah. I'll make some videos about that though. So Kelly S. Kelly S says, did you like the military? 
Another question I hear a lot. Um, I mean, yeah, or I wouldn't have stayed as long as I did. Um, I had a lot of negatives, negative uh, occurrences in my career, much more, I would say, than positive. And I know that's also because negative memories stand out more than positive. But I had a, I had a lot of um, sexual harassment and all, and I'll be making videos about that. So it has gotten better in, in some respects, um, but not all. But I'll, I'll be talking more about that down in future videos. All right, System 89 Delta, you asked, what is the best job in the Navy? Another one we hear a lot. Okay, he actually has a two, I, I'm assuming it's a he, um, just from the conversation of the email. Um, he has two, two part, a two-part question here. Okay, um, I can't tell you the best job because it's very subjective, you know, it's, it depends. Everything, like in life, it depends. There, there is no one best job, okay? Um, but you had asked, what is the best job in the Navy? Because I want to promote fast to make more money to support my family. Um, you know, there's, there's other ways, you know. For one, I don't care uh, what your rate is. Study, study, study. You know, advance. And to hear that there are, you know, one quota, one person's going to get advanced. I have known many individuals being that one person that advanced. I was one of them more than once. So it's all about study. Um, it's like anything in life. It's just how you, how you frame your mindset. Okay. Um, there are other ways you may not like those ways, depending on your rate. Um, maybe spend more time at sea duty, you know, because the more time you spend, you build up sea pay, you make more money. Um, if you go away, either an IA, which is an individual augmentee deployment, or on a ship when you're underway, you get family separation pay. Um, you know, there's, there's different ways um, like that to make money. So I don't know what type of money, you know, you're looking at a few bucks, a few thousand dollars, you know, $20,000. Yeah, I have no idea. Um, you know, what's the money for? That's a question that I would like to ask you. Is it for your kid's college? Because you can give me your GI Bill. Okay, um, you need it for medical bills, your medical's paid for. So really ask yourself, when you're saying you need to make more money, why? Housing's paid for. Um, you know, so what, what is it? What is your why? And you're gonna hear me talk about why a lot, because I really want, I want to get you thinking. Um, I like thought-provoking questions. All right, so those are those questions. And the bonus question that I received last night, um, or I should say, I interjected into a conversation on another Navy YouTuber's um, live Q&A and opened up a little bit of a dialogue. Um, Vanna, Vanna W. asked, what happens if you get hurt, like break a bone in the military when you're active duty or the reserves or something? And as I had stated there, and um, it was on Nikki MG TV's um, channel. And if you haven't checked him out, I'll link his information below. Definitely wanna, wanna check his channel out and subscribe because he's got a lot of great information. He's still active duty, just hit his 11 year mark. He's a corpsman over uh, in Japan. Um, but I had stated on, on his channel, they fix you. Um, if you're active duty, they'll fix you. You know, all your medical expenses are, are covered, um, depending on where you're located. Like if you're down here um, in the Durrell, Miami, South Florida area, you're at Southcom. They have a medical base there, but they're gonna send you out to a civilian if you like need surgery or something. So, you know, usually 99% of the time, it's gonna be a, um, a military base. And then maybe like 1%, maybe a little bit more than that, um, of the time they'll send you out to a civilian to get fixed. But no, your medical expenses are all covered. Um, on the reserve side, I'll be making quite a few videos about this because back in 2004, I had a serious injury and I broke my ankle. And at the time, they did not keep you on orders. So I got sent home. And like I said, that's, that's for another video. But um, things have changed for the reserves. Um, it's not the same, those active duty. So if you have um, a little bit more detail as to why you're asking that, uh, once again, you can just comment down below or you can send me also an email 
as these individuals did at Ask Laura at laurazorza.com. Ask yourself, why are you asking these questions? And I say that because if you can better understand where you're coming from with a question, sometimes you can answer your own question. But I like thought-provoking questions. I mean, these are all great questions. Um, some of them, like I said, all military members, we hear it a lot. But I would like to know, um, like, you know, got to make more money. Why? You know, maybe you need to go, and I'm not saying this is true for you, but maybe um, some individuals that are thinking this way, maybe you just got to go talk to some type of financial advisor. Um, you know, maybe, maybe federal, you know, might be able to help you out or, or some other type of, um, you know, fleet and fa family services. Um, there's all kinds of things out there, so ask yourself why, or even myself or other being military or military YouTubers in general, you know, be, be a little bit more specific because I know we all love it when you actually give us that, this is, this is why I want to know. I'll, uh, I'll be back with another video. Um, keep sending me the questions. I'll keep answering them. And like I said, I have a, I have a whole list of videos that I'm going to make that pertain exactly like to the reserves or to active duty, to specific rates, um, females serving, uh, lots of advancement tips. Um, I'm gonna, I have in the works also making some financial videos. Um, I have in the works right now some that are active duty compared to the reserves, such as retirement, advancements, um, and just a lot of little, uh, little things that people either don't know or they, they like to keep to themselves. So I'll be back in the next video. And until then, take care and have a great day. Bye.